we all want to know what we could potentially see this year out in the deer woods. Okay. Heck, some of us may even want to create hit lists. No worries if you don't want to. Okay. Before we can even think about doing such a thing, we need to understand a couple concepts and do some legwork. Right off the bat, that starts with home ranges. Home ranges are nothing more than the area that a deer spends over a calendar year. That area is its home range. Okay. It goes ahead and varies, but an average size is right around a square mile for a buck. The thing of it is, is that we're not talking about a square mile. We're talking about a bizarrely shaped object with bulges and twists and turns and narrows all over. You know, a lot of us home range, he's merely tra traveling from this spot to that spot to get to. So this spot will be a larger area, this spot will be a larger area, then you'll just have a little connective tissue. A whitetail only has one home range at a time, though they may have several over their lifetimes. So you look at that buck. At year and a half old, he has a high tendency to disperse one to two miles, uh, one to ten miles away from his birth range. That's exclusively to minimize interbreeding. Okay, and then every now and then the mature deer will go ahead and shift a home range completely, but that is actually pretty darn rare. Most bucks have two home ranges in their entire life. The size of that home range, it has to be big enough to provide that animal everything that they need to survive. And it sure is nice when it provides them with the things they want the most as well. Okay. Think about that for a second. That home range has to give them everything they need. So you look at a large forest area you know, with very comparatively low food quality. Compare that to that egg rich land in Iowa and man, I'll tell you what, those bucks in Iowa can have much, much, much proportionately smaller home ranges than those northern Alberta bucks that are living out in the big timber. Now, as I said, you only have one home range at a time, but the other thing we need to cover are core areas. The core areas are the areas within that home range, essentially that these animals bed. And the areas during, during the daytime and the areas directly adjacent around them that they travel during daylight. When I'm referring to a daylight core area, I'm talking about the bedding area and the area they travel around that bedding area during daylight. Though the bucks have one home range, they almost always have multiple core areas. Now, just like the home range, they don't spend an equal amount of time in each core area. They might be over on this core area here that has a heck of a lot to do with that alfalfa field just producing awesome food right now while they're they, so they spend spring summer early fall on that alfalfa field then that alfalfa field starts to sour and at the same time you got the testosterone starting to rise they want to rub they want to scrape so they go ahead and shift over to this core area over here instead you know they might only spend a week here and then they might shift over here and spend three months okay or they may be switching between all three of them on a weekly basis. Core areas are nothing more than the daylight bedding areas and the areas around them. They shift those daylight core areas for a whole bunch of reasons. Okay. Lastly, we need to factor in the rut. I touched on it just a moment ago, that testosterone's rising. They want to do a bunch of rubbing. They want to do a bunch of scraping. And then the breeding phase comes and they want to actually find those does. This is when those bucks that you haven't seen all year long end up most often appearing in your area. Here's the dirty secret though. That area was typically part of their home range the entire darn time. But now, because you happen to have a bunch of pretty smelling girls or are positioned between two concentrations of pretty smelling girls, now the big boys are coming through because they're actually interested in does. That is why we see so darn many bucks that we hadn't seen all season long during the rut. Most times, not always, but most times, it's part 
of their home range all along. It's just that they don't, the reason they have that as part of their home range is because of breeding. Outside of breeding season, they don't spend much time there. So if you, now let's put this all together. If you really want to have a picture of what's going on in your area, what you can see, realistically see during hunting season, you want to try, I'm not talking about dedicating your lives to this, but you want to have a pretty good idea of the quality bucks for at least a two mile buffer around your property. Honestly, 10 miles is better, but the further out you go, the obviously the more time it takes and the lower the odds that that buck you see eight miles away versus the one you see two miles away is going to show up on your property. That two mile away buck, odds aren't that bad. Eight mile, now we're starting to get down a little bit. Final thoughts brought to you by Huntworth. Before a person can even try to figure out what they're going to see this fall, a person has to understand home ranges and core areas in the rut and how that impacts how these animals shift around. Once you understand those factors, then you realize that, hey, what I have on my property over summer and coming into fall yeah, they very well may be there to hunt for me this fall as well. But I just may have a whole bunch of new animals moving in and they may be shifting out. How do I figure out what I realistically may see this fall? I really try to learn about a two mile area. Just through observation, see what I have for quality of bucks within two miles of the property. You do that you get a pretty good idea. You really want to nail it, you'd go for 10, but that would be so much work, it'd be ridiculous.